I really, really like Jurassic Park. I used to own a Jeep YJ that I bought, used and restored in the famous two red striped colour scheme. Here's a photo of me on Halloween, <laughs> cosplaying and giving out sweets and candy to kids next to my Jeep. Um, there's a wall in my house that we painted to match the uh, glass wall that you see in the famous, just prior to the famous kitchen scene in the first movie. Uh, and you won't find anywhere in my house that isn't in some way Jurassic Park or uh, dinosaur related. Um, the sequel to Jurassic Park, The Lost World, came out in 1997, and most people say it is the worst Spielberg film. <laughs> However, it came out at just the right time for my young brain to absorb all that it had to offer uh, and obsess and obsess and obsess and wear out the VHS by watching it over and over again. And you know when VHS is when you pause at a certain scene and it gets stretched, the tape gets stretched. Um, there were several moments in the film which I just paused and left on the screen. <laughs> I maintain to this day that the cliff scene contains more car geek goodness than any of the post-2009 Fast and the Furious movies. We've got winch cables being pulled taut, differentials forcing wheels to move backwards, shifting into low range in neutral then back into the reverse, and a proper three pedal SUV spraying mud everywhere and ultimately meeting its end. Which brings us to this model kit. Back in 1997, Revel, or I should say Revel Monogram, since they merged in 1986 or something, uh, made a line of Lost World uh, model kits to promote the film. Uh, and this one, which I got off eBay, is still sealed, as you can see. So let's have a look at the packaging. Um, we've got some, that looks like a photo of the kit, whereas that looks like a photo of the actual, <laughs> the actual truck. Um, it is a snap tight, which is their kind of more basic, more kid friendly uh, style of kits. Uh, can we even read? Is that 11? I think it's $11, is that sticker? And yes, oh, here we go. Here are the other kits in the line, if we can have the camera focus. So you see we've got the Mercedes M-Class, we've got a Humvee, we've got a T-Rex and a pair of Velociraptors. Let me know if you want me, <laughs> I'm actually considering picking up the Velociraptors and painting one like blue, or attempting to, because you know I'm not actually a very good painter. <laughs> um, oh that's funny, look at that. Please use discretion when making film choices for young children. Basically, it's scary dude, there's dinosaurs everywhere. <laughs> dino, dino in <laughs> anti-intrusion bars. Uh, those worked out pretty well, didn't they? <laughs> Admittedly, uh, this one with the dome on the top is not the one which famously Eddie Carr uh, died in. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see. Looks like it's a pretty simple kit. It's pretty much the body, the interior the chassis or the frame, even though it's not a body on frame vehicle. Uh, let's grab my handy dandy pocket knife and open it up. Oh, I'll get a whiff of that 1997 air. Wait, hang on a second. Join the official Jurassic Park Dinosaur Club. One year only 1995. It's the same price as a Nintendo Online. Incredible. Aurora CO. Huh. I wonder what you got from the Dinosaur Club. Maybe I'll look at that later. Yeah, let's open this up. Oh man, this looks like it's been knocked around. Uh, transparent bits. Enormous amount of transparent uh, glass at the top there. And the dome at the back. And those are probably the headlights, I'm guessing. Um, yes, because the tail lights would be red, wouldn't they? <laughs> and the rest... Oh, here's... Ha, ah, interesting. Screws? Never done a model kit with screws before, and I'm betting those are the axles. Uh, and then the rest appears to be moulded in dark green. Alright, let's take a look at the manual. Oh, and we've got stickers. Oh, I'm sure these are still good after all these years. <laughs> Very, very simplistic stickers compared to what we're used to with model kits now. Let's make sure this is in focus. 
Oh, that's interesting art. I've never seen that art before. I wonder if that's unique to this. Because that doesn't look like the car at all. That looks like a, an old Toyota minivan. And that is a different version of the same art. Step... <laughs> Parts will only snap together once. <laughs> that's how much force you put into them. So yeah, extremely simple kit. It's literally seats into interior, dashboard into interior, and already I can see dreaded two pedals. So we've got the automatic, oh, is it even in frame? We've got the automatic version of the, uh, of the car, not the manual one, as shown in the film. Metal axles for that, and then screw it in. So it's straight up, it's built like a, um, it's built like a die-cast car. And then here's how you put the stickers on. Well, that's very interesting. Let's move to somewhere a little bit more, um, a little bit more comfortable for me to actually take a look at these. And then I, in fact, let's see what's the camera battery like. <laughs> it's all right. Let's have a look at in here. I wonder why they put the red tail lights inside the bag and the transparent ones outside the bag. Got the very stiff rubber tires as the interior with the dreaded two pedals. Nice, actually. It's not even that bad. Detailing on that. I'll see if I can... See the detailing on the radio stack? Actually pretty nice. There we go. I do have the macro lens on for this, so <laughs> be able to get nice and close. Um, and the body of it, I mean, yeah, it's sure is Revel. These are a bit delicate. I'm glad those aren't uh, glad those aren't broken at all. That looks delicate as well. Yeah, this is a. It seems to be pretty well molded, honestly. I mean, Revel is known to be pretty good. Ooh, ah, the bull bars, wing mirrors seats. As far as I can tell from images of the real car, real in inverted commas, um, it had a standard tan interior and the seats were just the standard tan seats with uh, black netting over the top. And that's funny. The back, <laughs> the interior, you can still see the rear door handles, but the interior is just entirely diamond plate. <laughs> What were they going to put back there? Ooh, and then we got boxes. Those look like they're just going to be... In fact, are those optional? Yeah, they're not on. Those boxes are not on the promo photo. But they are on the um, photo of the kit on the side. Interesting. And then on the bottom, uh, rims. And then that's the uh, snorkel, cold air intake or whatever it's called. That's nice. Got a little... Got a spare tire in the back. Um, come on, focus. Spare tire underneath, and we've got, we can see the rear drive shaft, there's the transfer case, the oil pan, front drive shaft going to the front differential. Um, these Mercedes cars, oh, and of course the, the worn winch on the front, which famously was able to keep a 10 ton <laughs> RV from falling off the cliff when the car itself only weighs about two tons. If you've ever tried to hang a piece of string off, <laughs> uh, hang a, uh, uh, a computer mouse off the off the table with just the wire holding it up, doesn't end so well. But yeah, I'm actually pretty impressed considering this is well over 20 years old by now. Um, but yeah, these these Mercedes, they're, I mean, they weren't particularly great when they came out, and they certainly aren't by today's standards. They had an extremely all three differentials, so it's it's uh, it's actually very similar to my car, the the Land Rover. All three differential. Uh, there's the transfer case doesn't um, switch from too high for high for low. It's it's permanently four wheel drive with uh, an optional selectable low range, and they're all all diffs are open, and there's no uh, and modern cars. It, uh, modern cars, the transfer control system is is pretty good. Um, in 1997, it was not. <laughs> um, I'll play a clip later uh, 
to show just how bad the just how bad the traction control can be on these cars, but they're um, not the greatest off-road because um, you'll get you'll get three wheels with traction, one wheel without, and all of the engine's power will go to that one wheel and will become one wheel drive. <laughs> yeah, I like the the diamond plate, the the diamond plate on these. If we can focus, please. The diamond plate on the on the steps. But yeah, I'm actually impressed with this kit. Uh, I would have been absolutely stoked to get this kit as a child. Um, I'm pretty excited now because I only found out that they exist or a couple of days ago. There's the Mercedes logo, and we can see the grill, uh, the the netting on the on the seats, and the uh, very basic interior. I wonder. Hang on a minute. Yeah, the stickers are pretty much just the camouflage pattern, which I'm going to paint by hand because just having these sections would look like pretty bad. <laughs> okay, let's, yeah, let's find somewhere a little bit more comfortable uh, to actually um, see if we can start priming this and, and getting it ready to actually be painted. See you then. So I'm downstairs now. I've got the box here. Everything should be primed. Uh, and I actually have a two camera setup here I've got this camera here and this camera here and uh, I'm gonna put them both in time-lapse and I'm going to time-lapse painting and then uh, possibly building depending on how it goes so I'll see you soon So as you can see, I'm well on my way, but as it is now, I wanted to just demonstrate how simple this kit really is. Um, <laughs> all we've got, uh, I guess, chassis, and then interior, then body, and then uh, wheels and tires. And what I've done, oh, and the glass, <laughs> duh. And what I've done, is actually take apart and drilled out the rivets of this much more modern Mercedes. And all we have to do to show how similar this is to the old one. So we've got the chassis with the wheels and tires, the interior, which is where the seats are, then the glass, and then the body. So really, this old Revel kit is built on the same principles and the same mechanics as any garden variety uh, 
die-cast car, like a Hot Wheels car or a Matchbox car. I think these ones are Matchbox. But yeah, you can see how it's not particularly satisfying for me because I'm used to aircraft where you've got hundreds and hundreds of tiny minuscule pieces that all have to be put together perfectly to get the undercarriage put together, things like that. Um, but yeah, uh, I may take a break because my back hurts. Um, let's just quickly show, obviously this is all work in progress. Um, we can see the interior there and what I really like is if I get, let's get a pen to show you. Let's pull this up here and give some light. So if you see that button there is the low range button that he hits, but you can see we've got the, well, that doesn't even look like the real car's uh, transmission shifter, honestly. Um, I think this is creative liberty, but um, overall the kit is molded very well uh, and it is very high quality. And also um, the snap tight nature of it is actually pretty impressive because none of this is glued. This is just, you can just pull this, pull this out. Now watch, I'll snap the whole thing apart. <laughs> hmm. All right, maybe you can't just pull this out. Well, if I wasn't looking through the viewfinder of a camera, I could probably do it. But yeah, um, I was going to redo that. Don't know. Oh, this is a this is a Gundam marker. I was using it to draw on the thingies. Kind of cheating, but you know what? Who cares? I also really like. Another thing I really like is the wheels, where they are actually licensed Goodyear trackers, Goodyear Tracker AT, which is uh, very interesting because normally the tire is the one thing you can't get, or oh, the tire is the one thing that there's never any license for, because why would you? It's just a tire, it's just a rubber circle. <laughs> so yeah, um, unsurprisingly, no such licensing for the worn winch, um, although I may try and put a red a red <laughs> triangle on it for the logo. It is the next day and I painted a bunch off camera, but I thought I would save the final construction to be on camera so you can see we're all still kind of <laughs> falling apart. So let's get this out, let's get this out of the way. Let's see if I can sit down without pulling the camera over. I'm gonna try it off. So yeah, the outside. Um, I pretty much did my own thing as far as camouflage goes. Uh, I tried to follow the basic idea, um, but since it varies so much between the screen used props and then the example images and then the, uh, the replica that they have at Universal Studios, which I went and saw, um, it's difficult. <laughs> there isn't really a consensus. Um, the interior, I did put the uh, uh, sticker on the <laughs> sticker on the dashboard. Um, let's just start with the wheels. So yeah, the wheels pretty much just slot through here. It's very very simple. Slot through here and on the other side. Ugh. Same deal on the front. I really like the, um, the fact it's licensed. It's it's funny. It's I said it was dumb, but I actually have grown to like it. <laughs> the fact that they're real, real tires. That's it's closer to a, a, a diecast model. So that goes on there with that lined up, and then the screws go in the back. Yeah. So I guess now we could put the back screws in. And then next step is, I think, the next step, I'm not looking at the instructions because I can't be bothered. Next step is popping this on, which is supposed to hold itself together. One of, one of the big complaints I would have for this kit is that some of the snap together aspects take far, far more force than I'm happy with applying to 20 year old plastic. Like this, for example, there we go. Is that clipped in? I think that's clipped in. Yeah, that looks right. So yeah, now we have the gigantic sunroof. I'll put this whole thing together. 
What's it getting stuck on? Is this not in all the way? Oh yeah, that may not have been in all the way. All right, let's try this again. So this has kind of got a hook under there. Hmm. Oh my goodness, this is a lot more complex and a lot more in depth than I thought it was. Am I getting it? Slowly, very slowly. Man, this is stressful. <laughs> Alright, now if I just screw that in, is that gonna go? I thought this was gonna be the easy part that I could do on camera quickly and show how cool I was. All right, I give up. Instructions time. Where did I miss? What did I miss? Yeah, three in the base. Oh, I guess you're supposed to put the interior up on the top before the base. Yeah. All right, let's just do that quickly. Let's see if I can pull this apart. Yeah. I guess that makes more sense. Yeah, it must have been it wasn't going in there properly. But now I've got this out, it's considerably easier. To snap tight it together. And then this should just sit on top and hopefully be... The front still isn't lining up perfectly, but you know what? The real car doesn't line up all that well either, so... I wish there were wheel wells in the front as well. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see light through there, which you shouldn't, because that's where the uh, engine should be. Obviously. <laughs> oh well, that might be as best as I'm going to get it. Let's put the back ones back in. Um, this was Mercedes's first ever V6, the one in the ML320. Believe it or not, for as long as the car company's been around, this is the first time they ever built a V6. Some esoteric Mercedes trivia for you. Alright, well, there it is. It certainly does roll. It looks pretty good, honestly, if I do say so myself. It looks a heck of a lot better than the uh, horrible art on the front. <laughs> um... Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really happy with this. What I'm going to do is grab my uh, Lazy Susan uh, and see if I can take some, take some slow rotate shots of this and that kind of thing, and then I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit. So now we've got the completed kit. I thought I'd give you some, give you some kind of conclusions. Uh, on how this kit was to build, what's, what's a 20 year old Revel kit like. So, obviously this, this kit is made for children. Um, the uh, complexity of it was very, very simple, especially compared to Revel's um, more modern aircraft, which can be extremely intricate, extremely beautiful, and how they're put together. This was built like a, uh, <laughs> like a die-cast car and was therefore not particularly satisfying for me to build. However, um, as a fan of Jurassic Park 2, it was kind of essential. Uh, these, these Mercs were pretty terrible when they were released, and they're especially terrible now. The build quality is horrible. <laughs> the only good thing they've got going for them, really, is their low-range gearbox. Um, okay, so about to get one tire in the air. I am nervous. Sorry. That's hard throttle and it just cut all power. So uh, what's happening there is he's got open diffs, so instead of all four wheels spinning, basically just these two outside wheels are spinning. The two outside wheels are spinning, which means he's not getting enough traction to go up the hill. But that doesn't mean I don't think they look extremely cool, especially done up with the off-road tires and the camouflage paint job um, and the steel bumpers and the, the big lights and things. 
I really like the way these look. Um, speaking of the paint job, uh, this is all matte. So this is, was all matte acrylic model color and Citadel paints. Um, the real, real car was gloss, but painting a car camouflage gloss is very, very silly. <laughs> um, but that being said, something, something that's always made me laugh about these is you paint, you paint the car beautiful, camouflage, everything. You've got green wheels, all of this. Mercedes logo is still chrome. We've got huge lights everywhere, especially on the other version of this and the, uh, the RV, the trailers. <laughs> like, why would you have a camouflage paint job and then an observation dome, which is just a big piece of shiny glass? And you can see here, the reflections are crazy. Like, there's a reason um, <laughs> people in the army have to wear their watch on the inside of their wrist instead of the outside because the glass of the the glass can glint and give away everything it's anyway i know it was done for product placement i know it was done for the movie uh, still stupid i really like it i really like the movie <laughs> and i'm proud of this kit even though it doesn't hold together at the bottom properly um i actually did try uh, as far as the molding goes uh, i'm very impressed with the interior detail um the the dashboard especially with the low range button that you can actually see um, made me want to press it, just like the one in my car makes me want to press it too. Um, the only problem I had with it really was mold lines, um, where, uh, which is where plastic leaks out between the two halves of the mold and leaves an ugly line where, where it's done that. Um, and I, there was a lot of problems with that on this kit for a car to go by. I am outside. Um, especially on these lamps here, or these these roof lights here. Uh, I kind of painted a grid on them because ideally I would have filed them down and, and carved some detail, but I really didn't feel like doing that. So I just painted a grid to be like the, the, um, the grill that you would see on a lamp like that. Um, parts of the construction were very cool. Uh, the way the way these hold on is just through plastic stress, uh, so they just clip their way on and they work really well. Um, and the interior is also it was only five pieces, but it looks good and it fit together really well. So um, impressed with that. Actually, uh, I give this play kit a positive review. Uh, if I'd have got this back in early two thousand, late nineties, early two thousands, when it was probably still on sale. I would have been absolutely stoked. It would have been the best day of my life because I truly, truly loved these <laughs> these cars and I truly, truly loved the movie. Um, as I'm sure a lot of you can relate to seeing a bad movie when you're a child, it, uh, it, it, <laughs> it sticks with you in a way that nothing else really can. Um, and I am going to put this on display. I'll put a, I'll, I'll put a clip at the end of it of it going into one of my Jurassic Park displays. But I might try and take some take some photos of it around here, get it dirty or something. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you want to see more, you can follow me on Twitter at Swallowfire. Uh, there are links in the description. Um, I really do appreciate hearing from all of you. I try and reply to every comment. Uh, and if you want to ask me something, best way to do it is on Twitter. Um, so until next time, maybe if I pick up those uh, <laughs> The, the Raptor kits that were in the same that were in the same uh, line as this one. Um, I'll see you then.